Conditions you can live indefinitely, but if you can be rescued from biochemical, cellular, and physical accidents that befall us. It's a betrayal of your own body in a supposedly ideal environment. It happens at every level, at the genome, in the cells, the way the organs fit together, and at tissues. Natural selection starts giving a damn. Your body is pretty damn good at getting you to childbirthing years. And then after that, everything goes to hell in a handbasket if you're not taking care of yourself. That's why it's a tragedy when a 45-year-old gets cancer, but it's not unexpected. It is a heinous tragedy when a nine-year-old gets cancer because they shouldn't, and this is the reason why. Natural selection is pretty good about getting you there, um, but it's not perfect. So if you can go backwards in terms of evolutionary time, diet and environment, you're, you're doing better off here. Uh, this doesn't mean, you know, hitting your wife or girlfriend over the head with a club, dragging them by their hair, that type of stuff. Um, we're talking diet. We're trying to mimic a physiological state like that of our hunter-gatherer ancestors. So you're talking about these are very poor over the age of 35, grains, grasses, milk. Um, as I said, your child, I mean, all of you, gosh, think about going through puberty. You'd sort of like frozen macaroni, eating it frozen. It didn't matter. I grew up watching infomercials on Sunday morning. I would take an entire tub of cream cheese and eat it with pretzel sticks, right? Your, it doesn't body doesn't matter. Calories, growth, great. You know, it'll do it. It'll do it. But when you get old, your body is, you're not turning over tissue nearly as quickly. Things are going awry. You, you need to give it some support. The problem is the industrial part, high sugar, high processed, highly advertised Twinkies. Problem is agriculture, you know, 35 to 40, rice, grain, corn, they're very, very novel. Um, because it takes about a million years to adapt fully. So in a million years, we will be agriculturally adapted. None of us in this room are gonna get there, but we might as a human race be there. So that's why Egypt, Iraq, East Asia, they're better suited and, you know, Honkies like me, that's why, we, that's why we're good with milk. Northern Europeans, great with milk, bad with grains, relatively great with milk. Uh, you know, nobody today will get there. And they're gonna show up in middle age because of that natural selection. So what are we talking about here, other than the banana crazed monkey here? Uh, lots of evidence from four million to one million years. We ate roots with fruits, nuts, and berries, just like primates. And then we take the gamble, we come down from the trees, we reduce the size of our stomach, our brain gets bigger, we need more calories. So you get like Captain Orangutan here, spear fishing, and you thought we came up with it. Um, <laughs> common ancestor figured out, ah, and that's, that's the end of it. That's a pretty cool little photo there. Take up hunting, supplementing with the fruits, the nuts, and berries, and most hunter-gatherer populations still support their animal intake this way. Why is this familiar? Malibu Mark Sisson says so. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, a whole bunch of other people as well. But the point is, is that it's not that far off. And if you can move closer to this or to what Dave is going to tell you about with uh, tomorrow with his uh, dietary recommendations, you're going to be way better off moving much closer to biological immortality. And I want you to understand, too, it's a fool's errand to attempt to prove one complete diet over another is healthier. And I underline, underscore, circle, complete, meaning all the essential nutrients are present and accounted for. Because then you get people saying, ah, three more grams of starch will kill you. Rather, I would suggest that you look to see which has the lowest potential anti-health agents and adjust to that. I'm a facts and evidence guy. That's the thing that makes sense to me. You don't, those are the things that are gonna kill you. Once you're to a level of health, uh, as I defined earlier, you, Im you improve your functional capability with the strength training, all right? So to review, I told you why you should strength train, how it affects your body systems, and how to leverage your diet to create this biological immortality. They all fit together. To simplify that entire presentation, three points. Train, but do not overtrain with weights, and this takes care of everything. You avoid your stress, you know, it's everything will figure itself out over time, and you eat the way Mark Sisson told you to, <laughs> or close to it. Pretty much. That's all, guys. Any questions? <laughs> Ooh, got Mike. Yeah, we'll start. Steve, how you doing, bud? All right. Hey, I number one, 
I, uh, I'm a big fan of what you guys do. I've worked out with you guys and think you guys have the best personal training, uh, whatever, we have trainers that and setup ever. But uh, what, what I also wanted to know is uh, this was a really gr great speech for a lot of reasons. I want to know about some of the cardio stuff or the, the heart condition stuff because I've always had high blood pressure. My heart rate is 50 resting. I'm in good shape. Um, uh, my diet, I because of watching you guys, I'm on closer to a paleo diet. Uh, what, I guess, is the, and you talked about this, but directly exercise-wise, what is it that I should be doing that will have a direct result on that? Because I've tried so many things. I totally hate taking medication. It messes up my mood and, and uh, my motivation and all that sort of stuff. Um, are you high normal? Are you, are you, you, are you? Oh no, man, it's high. I mean, like it's, it's been really high at times since I got, I, I used to be really out of shape, but since I got in better shape, it lowered, but we're talking like 145 over 95 to a hundred at times. And, uh, it shouldn't, I'm 34, almost 35. So it shouldn't be there. No, it, sh it shouldn't be there. And I know that you're, are you, that, that you train with us. So that normally takes care of everything. Um, and <laughs> So what's no, no, but what I mean, but no, let me let me let me quantify that statement a little bit. Normally, it takes care of everything. Um, what I mean by that is that uh, it, typically we're going to see these things come in, and then if a person needs more, if all these markers improve, but there's one sticking out like a sore thumb, it might not mean anything in the context of the patient sitting in front of the doctor, rather than markers on a piece of paper, um, or it might be that you know what we got to medication for a reason. The naturopathic doctors like to wank about like we just j somehow jumped from being these healthy, peace-loving individuals to industrialized medicine. But you know what? Turmeric stops working after a little while. It doesn't, it doesn't, you know, when we talk about, you have to go to cortisone, right? And so it might be that as much as you hate taking medication, I mean, you know, your doctor would be better. You know, I'm not a medical practitioner. Uh, but it, if he might look at you and go, you know what, everything else is great. Mm, you might not need anything. Uh, that's, that's outside the scope of, you know, if you're resting blood pressure or resting heart rate's low, you know, when you train, your heart rate doesn't go through the roof and, you know, goes high, but not to, you know, run away sort of tacky. Yeah, I, I'm beyond that, I'm, talk to Doug. <laughs> um, well, I, yeah, sorry, just really quick. Uh, like that, Next that's question. the problem is medical doctors always jump to this like conclusion of you have to do this. And I'm wondering if it's healthy or not because I find a DO. I'm I'm saying this nicely. Find find a DO. They get more training, and they're paid less. So they care about their patient because they want to keep them around. I'm serious. It, 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 it's true. I mean, they get the same training, plus more, and they're paid less because in America we only look at MD, magical deity. I figure out what DO could be. It would be it would be bad. I don't know. I'll figure it out later. Um, one more question. This guy right here. We're bringing around the mic. Uh, I was reading Doug McGuff's book, and he talks a lot about how running a mile, <clears throat> sorry, uh, running a mile and walking a mile, you burn roughly the same amount of calories. Uh, can you explain why that is? It's not entirely true, actually. It's one of the studies we did in my, sorry, Doug, time to crap all over you. Uh, <laughs> that's not entirely true, but I'll qualify that a little bit more. Um, the amount of calories you burn on a given distance is mostly determined by weight. And so you can run a mile with horrible, at a slow speed and horrible mechanics, and you're going to work harder. Um, but nears makes no difference. It's the same. If you're heavier, you're going to burn more. If you're lighter, you're going to burn less. It's a narrow window. So, you know, technically, you burn more calories running that mile. But are you going to be excited about 15 calories? I'm not. That's three sticks of, of sugar-free gum, for goodness sakes. I mean, you know, uh, it, that, that's, that's nothing to get. Uh, your body it doesn't do accounting like that. So, you know, I like walking. I got in an argument once with uh, this woman who runs the newspaper. I sent in, she was talking for Fit Austinites, and I explained to her I trained, you know, about once every five days with weights, 13 minutes a pop. Um, and the rest of the time, I just, you know, relax. I'm working on my feet training people. She goes, well, you must do more. You must do more. I go, and walk my dogs a mile, you know, but I'm bipedal. That, shh, that's not a work. It's not a workout. And she goes, walking's a great form of exercise. And that should tell you right there what the problem is with when we think walking's a great form of exercise. And she left off with this. I don't want people thinking they can get fit lying around on the couch all week. 
you know, because that's exactly what I said. But you can, I do, you know, I mean, it, it's just, just, I sleep and I work out once a week and I hibernate and it's great. No, uh, yeah, the, the point is, is that if you're in good shape, you might want to go do that and it's fun for you. But don't get too, don't get too obsessive about 15 calories walking or running that mile. Yeah, there we go. That's it, guys. Thank you.